The climate crisis is not going away anytime soon. Whether it's keeping things green on the pitch or up in the air, football certainly needs to play its part in tackling the problem. So is the sport making enough of a contribution or is there more work to be done? Hello there and welcome to Football Now from Doha. Now the climate remains one of the most debated, most talked about issues today. And as it's Euro News' Green Week, we thought we'd take a look at the role that football can play in helping to protect the planet. So, as the biggest sport in the world, is enough being done? But there is a question about whether football is doing enough to tackle this topic and I believe that we're probably in the early stages. The global sports industry and the global football industry has a carbon footprint around the size of Denmark, Spain or Poland depending on your estimates. So quite large and of course when we consider football's communications influence, you know, over half of the world's population tuned in for the 2018 World Cup final, a third of the world's population tuned in for 2022 in Qatar, Football has that responsibility to be able to reach out to its audience and use its influence in the right way to, to tackle climate change. Let's now take a look at some of the clubs that are doing their bit for the climate crisis around Europe then, starting with the world's first ever carbon neutral outfit, Forest Green Rovers. Having installed solar panels, rainwater harvesting systems and an organic pitch, Forest Green Rovers have gained international recognition for their contribution towards fighting the climate crisis. They've even introduced a plant-based menu in their stadium, promoting sustainable food choices. The club's owner, Dale Vince, bought Forest Green back in 2010. He's also the founder of Ecotricity, one of Britain's greenest energy suppliers. The club actively engages with the community too, including a free educational programme for schools called Fit to Last. The programme teaches the benefits of sport, health and sustainability through tailored lessons, tours and school visits from team players. Well, joining Forest Green Rovers in becoming the first set of clubs to pledge carbon neutrality was La Liga's Real Betis in 2019 and Liga earns Lille the following year. Part of Lille's promise was to reduce carbon emissions during travel to away matches, whilst Betis' stadium, the Benito Villa Marine, has become one of the most sustainable in world football. Well, if we speak about sustainability, obviously football can play a really important role because it's a global sport, a sport that actually sets the trends for so many other sports and we have two really good examples, two clubs that committed to this uh, carbon neutral initiative of the United Nations. We have Betis and we have Lille. Betis and their Benito Villamarina Stadium where they are taking care of the lining of the stadium, trying to reduce consumption, digitalizing the club, stop uh, trying to stop using paper as much as possible. Lille, on the other hand, they are paying a lot of attention to their emissions, trying to cut them to reduce them to minimum and once again this may look as just a little bit but if we make it global in the world of football then we can make it global in the world of sports and then the impact will be huge. Now to Germany where things officially change for the better at the start of 2023. The Packaging Act means that clubs in the country's top four divisions must offer reusable cups and plates for fans consuming those pre-match snacks. It's all part of a wider initiative to save on excess waste. Yeah, we've seen a big emphasis on sustainability in German football for a number of years now. Wherever you go in Germany, uh, that, that's beyond football, but also football, you'll get a plastic cup that uh, comes with a uh, deposit that you can then get back when you uh, hand it in. That uh, creates a real incentive not to produce uh, any waste. It's not just with the Packaging Act where Germany are increasing sustainability efforts either. In the last year, there's been a big effort in reducing power usage as a result of soaring energy prices across the country. Freiburg's new Europa Park Stadion has an impressive 6,200 solar panels on the roof, whilst Bayer Leverkusen and Bayern Munich are using more efficient ways to power their undersoil heating. The league champions have also cut in half the amount of time that their home stadium, the Allianz Arena, uses those iconic LED lights to illuminate the outside of the ground after dark. There's always been a huge, especially since the war in, in Ukraine, a huge emphasis on saving energy. You've seen clubs uh, trying to use less of their floodlights, use less of their external lighting. Uh, it's been something that's been at the forefront uh, of German football because they take their social responsibility very, very seriously. Of course, sustainability doesn't just happen at the stadium. With over 3 billion fans worldwide, many of whom attend matches in person, reducing carbon emissions on a match day is vital if football is to contribute to the cause. But with so much travel involved, just how viable is this and what steps can be taken going forward? I think the important thing is that um, football's carbon footprint is large, but it's 
really as a result of kind of fan travel. But how do we address this? At the same time, it doesn't mean that we're then going to be punitive towards fans and, you know, telling them to stop going to away games or things like that. You know, I mean, we all know what empty stadiums look like. We've just lived through COVID. What we have to bear in mind is that football's carbon footprint is still relatively small compared to other industries or compared to the wider travel industry. So then what we can do, our methodology is, if we can get, you know, clubs to stop flying to games, you know, for example, this sends a really clear and important message out to fans about what sustainable travel can look like. And um, therefore we can address football's carbon footprint, but also that more broadly beyond the game. Yeah, climate change is a massive topic, isn't it? And it's important to keep the discussion going to help do better for all of our futures. That brings us to the end of this week's show. Do let us know your thoughts at home using the hashtag FootballNowGreenWeek. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.